What's going on guys? Welcome back to Miniature Mayhem. My name's Chris. I've got a little bit of a longer tutorial for you today. I'm going to be painting the Warsong Revenant in the colours that I paint my Sylvaneth army. For any of you that know me, you know I've got an absolutely massive Sylvaneth army that I'm really proud of. I take it to uh, tournaments whenever I can and uh, it's probably my main army I guess, especially for Age of Sigmar. With the release of the Warsong Revenant, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a tutorial the way that I paint my army and to share it with you guys. Before we get started, I'd massively appreciate it if you could head down below, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and don't forget to hit subscribe while you're down there so you never miss an upload. With the Warsong Revenant, I decided to keep this in three different sub-assemblies. The main body, which I've base-coated Chaos Black, followed by Pink Horror through the airbrush, and then the base and the sword, which is going to go on the Revenant's back. I've just base-coated that with Black Primer. I decided to put the full body together, as apparently this is quite difficult to get together once it's all painted. For the first highlight on the cloak, I'm going to use a 2 in 1 mix of Empress Children plus Lamian Medium. We're just going to glaze this around the tip of the leaves. If you're not that familiar with glazing, my last video that I uploaded was actually a full tutorial about glazing this exact model, and um, I'll leave a link to that up above. For the first glaze highlight we've just used one layer and I think that's come out with quite a nice transition. For the second glaze highlight I've just added a small amount of fulgrim pink to the mix we were using before. You can just see it on the wet palette there, it's quite transparent. And when you apply this you're just going to apply it halfway through the previous highlight and eventually when that dries you'll come out with a really nice transition. When you are glazing, try to use a brush with a decent sized belly and a good tip on it so you don't get any stray hairs making weird marks where you're trying to paint nice lines. Using pure fulgrim pink, I'm just applying an edge highlight along the veins in the leaves. This helps to add some nice definition to some of the shaded areas. For the wood and what will eventually be the golden areas, I've applied a base coat of Steel Legion Drab. You can use a fairly large brush here, but just be careful not to get it onto the pink. For the headdress, I've applied a base coat of Vallejo Brassy Brass. I did originally try and be really careful and go round all the vines, but it just turned out to be an absolute faff. So I decided to just paint straight over them and then I tidied up the wood afterwards. Now Sylvaneth Army as a whole actually doesn't have any metallics in it, everything's painted as like an energy effect. In fact the only other gold I've used up to this point has been for Elerial's dress. But with this model seeming to be her right hand man, I decided it'd be okay to have him with gold as well. Using Lamian Medium and Agrax Earthshade, I made a one on one mix that wasn't quite as harsh as using Agrax on its own. And I've applied this all over the gold and all over the wood, trying to get it to settle in the recesses as best I can. And obviously, try not to splatter this on the pink. With the Agrax Earthshade now dry, I'm just applying a first highlight to the gold using Vallejo Brassy Brass. For the headdress I highlighted all of the filigree and then went back and added some small little nicks and scratches to some of the broader areas. As a final highlight for the gold I've used Vallejo Glorious Gold which I've applied just to the highest points of the model. For a nice natural highlight on the wood, just use a really small brush to do some dry brushing of Rakarth flesh. When I initially started the army I did do targeted highlighting, but it just doesn't look natural on a wooden surface. As a final highlight on the wood, I just used a really light dry brush of Longbeard Grey, focusing on brushing the model from above. Using Thousand Suns Blue, I've applied a base coat all over the body and talismans of the Warsong Revenant. To give the blue areas a slight OSL effect, where the colour meets with another colour, I've just applied a little bit of paint along the join. You can see that here on the rune as I've just overbrushed slightly outside of the rune, and also on the talismans here where I've put it onto the gold. With the base coat now dry, I'm going to go completely over the same areas with Aram and Blue. With this layer however, don't start to overspill onto the other colours like we did with the previous layer and this will start to sell the OSL effect. 
Now to give this some really subtle shading, I've just applied a 2-in-1 mix of Drakenhof Nightshade and Medium. With that wash now dry, we're going to apply a really light dry brush of Temple Guard Blue. This only needs a very, very light dry brush, so try and get as much of the paint off as you can when you do this. And obviously try and be careful that you don't get any on the gold. Using Baharoth Blue, I'm just picking out the Lamentiri in the Warsong stomach. Still using Baharoth Blue, I'm just going to apply a really light dry brush as the final highlight to the main blue areas. Using the same technique as the Warsong's body, now's a great time to paint the sword as well. For the hair, I'm going to paint it in reverse to the body, so the first thing I'm going to do is just base coat it with Corvus Black. Using Thousand Suns Blue, I'm just doing a light dry brush along the hair. This helps to add some really nice definition. Towards the end of the hair, I'm applying a second dry brush of Arim and Blue. And finally, on the very tips of the hair, using a really light dry brush of Temple Guard Blue. With that layer now complete, we've got a nice transition from black down to light blue through the length of the hair. For the eggs on the Warsong's headdress, I've given them a base coat of Mechanicus Standard Grey. Once that base coat's dry, I've given them an all over layer of Dawnstone Grey to brighten them up a bit. Using Lamy and Medium, I've created a glaze out of Jean Stealer Purple and applied this all over the eggs. Going back to our original layer colour, I've just given them a light dry brush of Dawnstone Grey from above. For the little bug being hatched out of the egg at the top, I applied the same layers as I did for the body of the Warsong, as that's how I paint the sprites for the rest of my army as well. I've also attached the sword to the model's back. For the base of the model, I've given it an all over base coat of Gorthor Brown, followed by a wash of Agrax Earthshade. With the wash now dry, I've given the base a dry brush of Longbeard Grey. I know it's not for everyone, but I like to paint my rims with Steel Legion Drab. For the large skull and horns on the Warsong's base, I've given it an all over base coat of Xandri Dust. For a small amount of shading, I've applied a mix of Seraphim Seeper and Lamian Medium. While that's drying, I just base coated all of the leaves Caliban Green. I'm far too impatient as I did end up with this on my fingers. <laughs> For the first highlight on the skull itself, I just created a mix of Xandru Dust and Screaming Skull and applied this to all the raised areas. Once I've worked my way around the skull, I added some Lamian Medium to it and glazed the tips of the horns. As a final highlight on the skull itself, I've just applied an edge highlight of Screaming Skull to the most raised and prominent areas. Using a 2-in-1 mix of Lamian Medium to XV88 base paint, I've just created a glaze and I've applied that to the base of each of the horns. Just try not to get this on the skull itself as you want to create an area of contrast. Again using Lamian Medium, I've created a second glaze of Mournfang Brown and applied this to the lowest portions of the horns. And now to bring all the layers back together, just going to apply a highlight of Xandri Dust and add some striations down each of the horns. Just take your time here and work your way around and it will come out looking really nice. For the plants on the floor, I've applied a highlight of Lauren Forest. I decided not to highlight the plants any more than this, as I actually apply quite a lot of different flora to the base when it's all complete. For the lashing vines whipping ahead of the Warsong Revenant, I just applied a base coat of Steel Legion Drab. Being careful not to get any on the skull, I've applied a wash of Agrax Earthshade all over the vines.
I've given the roots an all over dry brush of still legion drab. In some areas I did almost an overbrush because I wanted to get rid of some of the tide lines from the inks. Using the same technique as we did on the legs, I'm just applying a light dry brush of Rakarth flesh to the vines. For the final highlight on the vines, I'm just using a really light dry brush of Longbeard Grey, just picking out the dangerous ends I guess. <laughs> For the bases on my silver neth, I really wanted to create like the uh, ground floor of a jungle or something. So I've used absolutely loads of different types of tufts. All of these are from Game of Grass, which I've picked up on Element Games. In this case, I've used wild, brown and dry tufts, as well as dark moss, lavender flowers. And at the end, just a little bit of seasoning with some Italian herb mix. And with that, my war song is finally finished. I did have a little bit of painter's block with this one. In fact, it took me around six weeks to plod through it slowly, but I hope that you guys like it. If you found this tutorial useful, I'd massively appreciate it if you hit a thumbs up down below. Share me with a friend or someone you think might find this video interesting. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the nice comments that you guys leave on the videos. I really appreciate them. It really makes me want to make more content. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.